Hello and welcome back to session 4 of the course. In this session, I want us to tie everything together where we will have a file server as well as a uh, function handler. Okay. So the only reason I decided to separate them was for you to understand each concept uh, individually. Now we will integrate. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to rename uh, this one. Okay. So I'll call it main that go that back back up two. Okay. And this main that go that bk, I will simply put that back to the original name. Okay, all right, so what I want to do is to sort of start creating a bit of organization, okay? So if I go into my directory, I have all my files here. And by the way, I decided to create another file, quote.txt, um, okay, and I have one quote in there okay all right so i have a bunch of files um index.html let's rename this uh, let's call this index.txt okay all right so i don't really have any organization in my code structure so i will simply create a new directory all right. Um, let me do that. Mm -hmm. And so I'll say mkdir, and I will call this directory uh, static. Okay. And I want to move things that don't change into this directory. So let's move um, index that txt uh, into static and let's move um, quote that txt into static okay all right so I have a bit more organization all right so you notice I have my static and in there I have things that won't change. So in here you'd probably have things like your uh, images and so on. All right, so let's go back. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to be able to access those uh, static files um, when I want to. Okay, so we already know how to create a file server. Uh, we will simply extend that file server. Okay. So our handler stays the same, nothing changes. Okay. Uh, we have our serve mux, we have uh, our root being handled by the home handler. And so now I will simply initialize, I will create a file server okay so I will say uh, file server will be HTTP dot file server All right and of course uh, we need to specify the directory where go will look the static files and so I will say that meaning the current directory forward slash static okay so it's relative to the top of directory all right so this is my uh, file server okay so now what I want to do I want to be able to uh, create a, a, a route a URL 
which says if you see this URL then you should go to the static directory all right so to do that uh, we will simply say okay, so create uh, URL mapping okay uh, to the static directory okay so I'm gonna say mux I'm still using mux okay and I'm gonna use handle okay and the reason I'm using handle is because I am not going to directly call a handler function okay that's why I'm using handle handle func means you're having a function as a second argument here we're not okay so we specify the route so forward slash let's say resource forward slash okay now uh, there are two types of URLs okay uh, this is an example of a subtree URL uh, whereby you have a forward slash at the end okay this simply means that the multiplexer will map anything that begins with resource followed by a forward slash and anything else could follow and it will say yes that's a match okay if i have something like this with no forward slash it means it's a fixed url and the multiplexer will only check for this exact exact match okay for our case it would make sense to use the forward slash because we might want uh, one of many static files all right so forward slash means anything could follow after all right so that's straightforward now what's the second argument well we will specify the file server okay okay now normally uh, you might say this will work but I want to mention something about how uh, the file server actually uh, matches the uh, okay, put a oh, forward slash here okay um, yeah so that forward slash static forward slash so when you call the file server the first thing the file server will do it will strip off this forward slash <coughs> okay great now the file server will take whatever the URL is okay so it's resource let's say resource forward slash and it will append it to this directory listing that we have so in reality we're gonna add uh, static okay okay and followed by whatever you're asking for maybe you're just asking for the entire directory maybe you're asking for something specific like info.txt but the key idea is um, the URL will be added to the end to determine which file to send back okay now let's look at this okay so if we run this as is then we end up with something like okay let, let, let's do something like local so we local host colon 4000 forward slash resource forward slash oh let's take that back okay resource let's say forward slash info txt so let's say this is my url I, I open my web browser and i type this now this will not work we will not get back anything we'll get an error and the reason is because 
all of this is our URL and where does this go well we will have uh, that forward slash right so the pot so that forward slash static forward slash resource forward slash info.txt and so you might be saying of course wait a minute uh, I don't have a directory named resource but this is what go comes up with because whatever is in the file server it simply grabs the url and sticks it onto the end and that is where it looks for what you want so obviously this won't work so what we have to do is to somehow get rid of this resource okay so we, we want to be able to end up with something like that forward slash static forward slash info not txt all right so how do we get this from the url which starts with resource forward slash info not txt well the solution is to get rid of the forward slash resource okay so if I have forward slash resource forward slash info that txt I will simply say you know what I will ignore this I will remove it and I will simply grab the info that txt and that is what I will use to attach to static okay so now how do we do that well in go there is a nice function which does it for us and it's http dot strip prefix okay http dot strip prefix remember prefix means in the front so I will tell this function, you know what? When you get the URL, for example, resource for slash info.txt, I want you to remove the forward slash resource. Okay? So I want you to remove it. All right? Great. And after you have removed it, I want you to then pass it whatever remains, whatever remains, to the file server. Okay. All right. So I have my strip prefix function. It will take the URL, it will strip off the beginning, it will get the info.txt, and that's what it will give to the file server. And of course, the file server will stick that onto the end, and then it will know what to return. Okay. So, we have our file server and so now we can go about running our web server so all right uh, it's telling me um, missing open method okay so yes I am missing my HTTP dot dir right close that okay All right you must always specify the directory inside the HTTP dot dir function 
All right, so that is set. Let's try starting up our web server again. Okay, so our web server is up. And so let's test out. Um, so let's say localhost 4000, what do we get? Okay, we get that. Um, let's try forward slash resource. Okay, we get index.txt and we get quote.txt. And of course, if I wanted, I could say index that txt or I could say quote that txt and it works because remember even though this is my URL the portion that I have specified to be stripped off is stripped off and whatever comes after it is sent to the file server okay so this is how uh, we can have bought a regular handle func, uh, which handles a um, URL specified by a handle handler function, and where we can also serve static pages, static files. So this simple program uh, can do both things. Now, as we learned uh, in the last uh, session, uh, if the web server finds a file um, named index.html, it will simply try to render that file. Okay, so let's see if it will render the file okay let's come back here all right so let's do that and it renders the page okay and of course I could say uh, index HTML and it will render it it will it will not show it it will render it all right Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover for this session. Um, the takeaway, we have handler functions. Uh, when we use them, we have to say mux.handlefunc. And of course, we have the ability to serve static files, files that don't change, uh, using a file server. But we must always remember to strip the prefix from the URL so that we can actually get the right name to send to the file server. Because remember, the file server takes the name and sticks it onto the end of this directory that we have inside http.dir. All right, so I will see you in the next uh, session. Keep in mind, we're slowly building up um, so that you understand the fundamentals of web applications uh, in Go. Don't forget, remember, the whole idea, the reason why we're using web applications is simply as a vehicle. Because as we build up, we will see that most of the work, most of the serious work that we have to end up doing to make our web application work properly is to ensure that our database is up to par, uh, that our database can handle significant load, and that our database is configured correctly, and that we have uh, designed our tables and so on uh, properly. All right, I'll see you in the next uh, video.